Hello, my name is Sunny D, and the D stands for Dirty Rice. I have one thing to say. <laughs> What's on the menu? Dirty, Dirty Rice! rice. <laughs> <laughs> Period. <laughs> Today, I'm going to be ranking the runway looks from the first episode of Canada's Drag Race, Canada versus the world. Let's get into it. At the bottom of my list, I'm so sorry to say, again, a needle wiglet. I just feel like this look is not up to par with everybody else. I just wanna say, I love Anita's enthusiasm, and she's just so excited about everything, but sadly, I was not excited about this look. Again, she has this like chunky shoulder strap that I feel like does not lend well to her frame. I do love this color on her, and I do love that we are seeing this glamorous side to her. Up next, Kendall Gender. Now, I love this pattern or this applique that she has going up her pants, but speaking of her pants, the fitting in the crotch area was not the greatest. It was a little saggy, a little wrinkly when she was walking around. I feel like that could have been <laughs> tightened back up. I love the concept. I don't think it was the greatest for this runway. I am obsessed with those swords. The hair is beautiful, obviously. For some reason, I'm feeling some sort of disconnect by the amount of detail in the pants and like the lack of detail or like rather symbolism of the bodice and the corset. Overall, I do think this is a good look, but it definitely didn't match up to the rest of the queens. Victoria Scone. Now, I know she said she wasn't a cookie and she wasn't a mushroom, but tell me why I instantly only could see cookie or mushroom. I feel like there's an absolute disconnect between this section up here, the bodice, or the decolletage, and the rest of the dress. I feel like the blocking of colors was not the best. I do love the concept. I love that she is a campy, conceptual queen. I love the hair. I just think the execution of this scone, scone was not my favorite. I will say on the bottom half of the dress, I absolutely love this like draping, this like cut out area to reveal the tool underneath. It That is very beautiful. Up next, Raja O'Hara. Now, obviously this is her color. Love this color on her. And I love that she creates like all her looks. I think that's absolutely adds to the fact that she already is a superstar. This look, I feel like there's a lot going on around this area. I feel like these peplums should be like more voluptuous and like stick out more to like accentuate this silhouette she has going on. And I know I said that there was a lot of like unclarifying detail up here but I do love like the way that it kind of lays I feel like it is beautiful I wish it didn't like cut off her neck area so much but I do absolutely love this hair and she does look gorgeous you cannot fault her on that purple queen I also want to say I absolutely love how she can make a pants look look so regal like kudos to her for that Again, my queen, Isis Couture. She looks gorgeous. If a movie studio was calling for a slutty, evil queen, witch, bitch, this is who they're calling for. She looks stunning. She looks like her character is lived in. This is gorgeous. The plumes of feathers, this peekaboo area of the breasts with the appliques where she just looks like diamonds on her titties. Ooh. She looks amazing. I think she's not at the top of my list because there are other looks that were more exciting to me, but she just looks perfect. Silky Nutbag Ganache. Wow, her runway, I screamed when she did the reveal, first of all. But I also wanna say, it's not often that a queen can do a reveal and both her first look and her second look are equally amazing and Silky did that. She really did that. This like first look is giving, I'm just going to my sugar daddy's funeral. And the second one is, now I own the sugar daddy's company. These are both two beautiful like ball gown looks. I don't know what else to say other than this is perfection. Oh, I can also say that that hair is just stunning. Rita Baga. Now, I've loved this look. One, the color palette is just very juicy. 
And something about this is just so regal. It feels traditional and yet somehow new and exciting. I feel like this definitely makes her look rich and like she's been that bitch at the castle, okay? And she is that hot dog lover. I love this. You can definitely see the glow up she's had. Wow. Vanity Milan. Wow, this is royalty, but this is so modern. There are so many things about this that I just love. The shape of her peplum skirt, these different textures she has going on, that quilting is just gorgeous. And I feel like a lot of queens will wear something like a headpiece or something around their neck that cuts off their head and it just doesn't make any sense. Like they just have a floating head. But this is how you do it. It's like her head is trapped in a cage, but that cage is the crown. The crown is hers. This color, y'all know, I just said it. Yellow, like Sunny. Oh, I love it so much. She looks amazing, incredible, show-stopping. Being spectacular, never the same, totally unique, completely not ever been done before, unafraid to reference or not reference, put it in a blender, shit on it, vomit on it, eat it, give birth to it. And at the top of my list, Stephanie Prince. Now, arguably, I could say that Vanity Milan had probably the best look, but this look just has a special place in my heart because she's representing for the Asian girls, okay? I love her. I love this look. I love that the bodysuit is like making her look like she's fully tatted with traditional cultural tattoos. I love just the cultural significance in general. She looks gorgeous. And these pots or whatever she has on her head. Wow. Talk about doubling the size of her body. That is insane. If I'm being honest, like I've always imagined that my entrance look, if I was ever on this show, I would do something very cultural. And every time I think of something, this is basically it. Like, damn, she really beat me to the punch. I will say I have thought of doing like a tattooed bodysuit look with like the drapery, with the cultural patterns. I think this is why it's at the top of my list, obviously because great minds think alike. Anyways, now that I stopped boasting myself up, let me just say thank you guys for watching. Um, let me know what you guys think about the placements, what you thought about the episode, and what you're thinking about for the season. Who are you rooting for? Uh, love you guys. See you next time. Mwah.